Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answered a no, man, I still go Go, 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 go Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar channel. This week, we're going to start some primer. Let's get to it. Before we start any primer, we need to finish a few panels. I like this gap up here. This is too tight, meaning the door kind of almost scrapes when it comes out. So I'll need to relieve this. But other than that, again, a few touch-up spots. It's looking really good. All right, I spent a little time cleaning up this seam right here. So that's a little more in line with the other seams. So the door seam and up top. Just finished up the driver's side as well. Uh, again, got some nice even panel gaps now. Um, one other thing I'm doing, um, I'm hitting everything with kind of a rubber mallet. Um, I just wanna make sure that any of my corners or edges that aren't gonna just uh, crumble or fall apart when they hit a bump or things. So I did get a little bit of chip out right here and a bigger one right here. So um, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and put some metal dowels and do some fiberglass filler around. Um, that's about the only places so far, but I'll keep pounding away. This is the door panel that uh, when I smacked it with a hammer, this part chunked out. So what I did here is I put in um, two screws. Those kind of act like pins um, and then kind of put the short strand fiberglass filler around it. And now I smack it with a hammer and it stays put. One more thing, I know it's just one more thing every time, but uh, when I didn't put this window in, again, this front is flopping around, and I didn't, I didn't like the idea of just the window itself, um, either glass or polycarbonate being the element that kind of is resisting all the force there. So I'm gonna look at maybe putting a metal bracket or something to kind of help secure things up front. Here is the plan. This is my paper template. I've got this, it'll have a bend right here. So it'll get fastened right there. So my plan is I'll do uh, maybe a couple rib nuts in the door panel here. And then if you recall, this is actually steel. So I'll probably just drill and tap this. So I'll have fasteners from the inside and it'll fasten through the window and into this. That should keep things nice and secure to the door. I ended up taking the windshield off. I am making some brackets and just making some mounting points for those brackets. So we'll mount it to the door. The bracket will come here, come up, and that way this part of the outer window will be able to be bolted to that bracket. There is the bracket. Then probably two fasten points here to that panel. Okay, we've got one fasten point. I actually want two, but this mirror's in the way from being able to drill it. And when you open the door, there's just not enough space to drill from the other direction. So we'll have to take the mirror off to get the second one. The second one should really kind of cinch this up here. This top one kind of keeps it even here. Basically, that's what we got. We just have a screw kind of going across spanning and kind of pinching it down. And I like that a lot better because then it's not just um, the edge of the glass or the edge of the uh, window here that's kind of keeping it, but also a fasten point. And then what I'll do, um, I think I've got this fastener so it's the right length, but I can just cover this up with some filler. That should work really well. I was drilling a hole here, and um, when it went through the metal, it kind of gave way, and I hit the uh, this guy back here, which not bad but um, it kind of slipped enough that it broke out the uh, rib nut here so I'm gonna have to go ahead and like fiberglass a nut from inside the door underneath so just more work I took off the mirror 
did another hole right here and that just sucks it up really nice. So now this is like very secure. So feeling a lot better about that. So that's kind of what it looks like with my bracket. Again, the window will go in between there. And this is nice. It's really nice. I mean, this is like really sturdy where before this can just like flex out and the only thing that was holding it in is the window. So now we've got fasteners, a bracket to the door and the window that's all holding it together up front. So I'm feeling a lot better about that. This is what it looks like to get the uh, panel on the door. We just got two bolts there, one over there. Just pop it on and off. Okay, I'm going for a drive first time with the top on. Entering the touch-up phase um, there's tiny tiny spots but this is kind of the speak now or forever hold your peace and it's things that you kind of don't see until you look close um, but you know like just a little something here I'll get the filler out or the glazing putty and just kind of go all around the car make sure I'm happy with all the panels even after I do the primer um, I may find one or two more spots but the, the intent here is just do a, a once over and then call it good and start disassembly Super windy today. I've been working on the passenger side of the car from about the kind of the wheel well to that wheel well. And so I just went over it all again with 150 grit sandpaper. Um, there's one spot here I wanted to build up a little bit more. This line was uh, not quite pronounced just in that area. So put some filler there and I've just been sanding and sanding. So I'm doing some more guide coat Take it down to 240, I'll go down to 320, and then 400. From there, I think it'll be ready for primer. Again, we've got a lot of the car left to do, so let's get to it. From about right there to about right there, just the side. I've got that all ready for primer. So now I'll go on to a different side. Took a break from filming, got some more sanding done. So the top is done, as well as this front lip. We will keep going. I'll say we're maybe about halfway there. It is time for disassembly. So I've sanded kind of the passenger side here pretty well, but I need to start working on the back. It means the wings gotta come off, the tail lights gotta come out. Um, so anyways, I gotta start some disassembly.
the, we'll call it the bottom half of the driver's side done. Um, from there, all the way back to the wheel well. Um, I will probably just do a two second clip saying I bumped it halfway through and you can't see it. That's probably not all that bad. You've seen enough sanding. It is time to go racing. I sent out a post that I'm gonna be attending the Holly High Voltage Experience. So in order to do that, I've got uh, maybe kind of 10 or so days um, to do that. So I gotta focus on getting this thing painted as much as possible. That being said, I think um, I'll call it the roof. That might be uh, optional. So I'm gonna focus mostly on the car now. So with only a few days, um, I've decided, okay, the roof, we'll take that off. These door panels, take those off. I need to focus on um, the windshield. And also I haven't done kind of this whole top surface, the back, the tops of the doors. So I have taken a razor blade and cut around here to take the windshield off. I've not ever uh, touched this one to kind of try and make it paint ready. So I need to do that as well. So I'll see if how easy the glass comes out and how easy I can clean that up. We'll focus on this and the top of here. Those I think are the last things to get the main body, doors, everything uh, painted. So I'll start with that, go for primer. If we have extra time, we'll do the top. I was able to get the windshield out. That was not as problematic as I thought. I just used a razor blade, cut around the caulking, peeled it off. Some of it I kind of sanded off, but that went pretty well. Then uh, got this all prepped. So this panel is ready to go. I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. Um, I've got less than 10 days to get this thing painted and put back together, get it on a trailer. I should oh, go. I thought it was doable at the time, but man, we are cutting it close. But man, this looks scary, don't you think? Okay, right up here, I put my air filter on. It's surprising to me for compressing so much air, kind of moving so much air. It's, it's a pretty small air filter. Um, other things, the, I don't know how well you can see there, but the oil. So again, we got sufficient oil. Um, at the top is full, at the bottom is lower. So anywhere in between is good. Next, this is kind of the supplies. Like once it's all pressurized, this is where it comes out. So I got a shut off valve and a little thread adapter. And then for power, this is actually just a dryer cord and it works out great. So they're really inexpensive because they're kind of a commodity and it works for my plug, my 220 plug that's right there. Um, so that's my uh, heater for the garage right now. And I did the same thing, I got a dryer cord. So that outlet works um, for the amperage we need. Again, this says it's good for 30 amps, it's 10 gauge. And then here it says, uh, mine's a 3.7 horsepower. So again, 10 gauge. So we are good. So we'll go ahead and take off this box and get things all wired up. Just like that, we got the power connected. Got the strain relief and everything. Should be good to go. Um, next, I'll put these fittings on and then we'll do the uh, initial cycle. So it wants you to run it kind of with no pressure for was it 30 minutes, 50 minutes? Anyways, just kind of break in the pump and then, and then we'll go to pressurize it. All right, I got all the uh, series of fittings and things kind of locked down and now not leaking air. So I've got my uh, shutoff valve, regulator, and this has also a filter. I'll probably get a couple more filters, make sure we got some nice clean air. Um, and then I'll, I've got my hose over there. I've even got a desiccant hose to make sure we're nice and dry. One thing I should probably make mention of is uh, the regulator there is somewhat temporary, um, as is the location of this whole guy. So I've got uh, another place planned, but uh, it's not ready yet. So for now, 
this is just going to be here. I'll put the regulator there. In the new place, I'll put the regulator and things uh, mounted on the wall. This one will have like rubber isolators and things mounted to the floor. But for now, this is what we're going to do. I have my air system mostly figured out. Got my shutoff valve, my regulator. I think this is a little bit of a filter. Got desiccant filter here and then another more heavy duty filter. Submicronic. Um, besides that, I've also got a desiccant snake um, hose that I'll hook up as well. All right, guys, this is a paint gun. So got it from Eastwood. So let's see what's inside. All right, so I got two different paint guns, one for primer and one kind of for everything else, the, the paint and clear coat. So primer has a lot more chemicals and anyway, I've just read and seen that uh, you probably should have a separate gun for primer. So that's what we've got. All right, this top one is for color and clear coat and this one is for primer. So other things, I got a paint gun cleaning set, paint suit, there's a regulator, goes for the guns. I've got some overspray plastic and some, call this masking, so premium masking paper. And again, in theory, this is so the paint will stick to this and not kind of just fly everywhere and get on everything. I got some of these, this is the 3M PPS system for the spray guns. Got some yellow masking tape somewhere. It is time to start opening some of my fun toys here. Let's see what we got. So this is the primer gun. So under the table I've got, um, that's the clear coat with the activator and reducer. On this side is the primer, again, activator and reducer. I've got some mixing cups, although I think the PPS system kind of maybe does a little bit of that for you. I've also got some strainers, and again, the PPS system has a strainer built in. But I feel, you know, they were cheap, and filtering twice is not a bad thing. I've also got some uh, microfiber towels, some tack cloths. So I believe we are set. We'll get things set up. Got to get some uh, air hose connections and things. Oh, I also got a desiccant snake. But we are close. So I'm in the paint booth. I'm going to start cleaning some parts, gowning up, and doing my first coat of primer. Wish me luck. So temperature in the garage is 75 degrees and we're at 27% humidity. checking out my uh, spray pattern. The data sheet for this primer says to use a 1.3 tip. So we'll see how this one sprays. Doesn't look too bad. Give it a quick pass here. That'll do pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and start spraying. Wish me luck. Okay, we'll show you after the uh, first coat. So I ended up doing this one pretty light. I've heard you kind of do the first one light and then kind of two medium coats. So this one's about ready to go again. It says let uh, let it kind of cure up 10 to 15 minutes. These are the inside covers for the front headlight housings. And half the time I don't use these. So I figured these would be a good one to start on. All right, that was the uh, final coat. Um, I used about 22 PSI, a 1.3 tip.
Yeah, this is my luck. I had it on the stool, decided to fall over, chipped off oh, that corner right there. So I've got a little chip here, and a scuff mark here. Again, this is the big chunk that came out. I'll have to flip it over, see if there's anything on the other side. Yeah, so really nothing on this other side. So uh, just that chunk out there, I'll have to fix that real quick. Then we'll uh, kind of scuff it all up, get it to primer one more time. And just like that, we got it repaired. Okay, I'm getting the hang of spraying. Um, first, I was just putting on way too light, so I'd get kind of the, I almost want to call it an overspray texture, where it's kind of really rough. So, um, slowed down my, my, my pace of laying it on, and it's looking just great. I don't know if you can tell. Again, I feel like the camera never really gives you good texture, but these are looking really good. So the first couple panels, I'll probably need to um, sand a little bit. But uh, I don't know, you guys have to let me know. I may need to sand all of them. The only other thing is I had an issue with one of these cups that was folded. And so when I put it on, man, it kind of, the thing is I put it on and I put it upside down to come spray over here and it was leaking. I was like, oh geez. So I came over here, tried to fix it, but just kind of got everywhere. Not a big deal. However, I tried to clean it up the best I could. When I went over here to spray, Everything went pretty good except for there's one drop right there. So again, when I sprang, just one drop. So I'll have to fix that one too. But all in all, I'm getting the hang of it. Um, over spraying stuff is really starting to get on the ground a lot. And I think it's causing a, more contamination issues. So when I take these panels out, I'll put in a new floor. Just got some more of this sheeting. I'll just get a new floor. We just got done priming the first parts. I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, some of the things I learned, I think, uh, for the settings I had on my gun, I think I was just kind of spraying a little too quick. Um, I was kind of on the side of uh, some of the kind of dry spray as opposed to, you know, getting close to runs. So I think I got to slow down, put it on a little bit thicker. Uh, but if you guys have other comments for me, please let me know. That'll do it for this week. See you next time.